Hey guys, welcome back. I've been asked to do a video from one of my subscribers on how to add working headlights to a Hot Wheels car. There are a few videos covering this on YouTube, but the challenge seemed fun, so I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. I have a couple failures under my belt before I learn some of the tricks that I'll show you in this video. The first thing you need to consider is the car, and this is the most important decision. I would guess you could get any working headlights in almost any Hot Wheels, but I've found that if you want it to actually look realistic and impressive, you need to find a car like this 76 Greenwood Corvette. More specifically, you want a car that the interior plastic is being used as the headlights and the headlights are cast into the body. This of course does limit to some degree what cars you can use, but if you look around you may be surprised how many you can actually find. So let's get started. I pre-drilled the rivets on this car to get an idea of how much room I have to work with. Looking at the car in the packaging, I was pretty sure that I would have almost no room, but after getting it open, I was surprised at actually how much room I had. So after seeing this, I decided to go ahead and use this particular model. So we're going to need to get a couple parts to make all this work. First, two ultra-bright 3mm white LEDs, or whatever color you like. Two LR754 batteries, or whatever size will fit your car, use the biggest possible. Each is 1.5 volts, so we'll need two to get the three volts that the LEDs require. You'll also need to get a small micro slider switch, small enough to fit inside the car. This is of course to turn the lights on and off. And last, you'll need some small gauge wire. The best place to pick all this stuff up is at eBay. So here's my plan. I'll place the batteries in like this, and then have the LEDs pointing out the headlights. Right now there is not enough room for the batteries to fit, so the first thing we'll need to do is do some surgery on the interior plastic. So the first thing we'll do is, about where the batteries go, I'll use a drill to create a hole. Then using a Dremel with a barrel type cutter on it, I'll slowly remove the plastic, taking enough out that the batteries can fit. The hole doesn't need to look good or anything, as no one will see it. It just needs to be big enough that the batteries will fit up against the body of the car. While we have the Dremel out, let's go ahead and make a small hole for the switch to fit in. Be sure to make the hole long enough that the switch will be able to slide far enough to turn the lights on and off. Now we need to mess with our LEDs. We need to wire them in parallel. If you're not familiar with parallel and series circuits, don't worry, you don't need to understand the theory here. If you look at an LED, you'll notice that one leg is longer than the other. The LEDs are diodes, and thus are polar, sort of like a battery. The longer leg represents the positive side, and the shorter leg the negative side. For the LED to work, the positive side must be connected to the positive side of the battery. More on this later. For now, to wire these up in parallel, you need to twist together the two longer legs of both LEDs and then twist together the two shorter legs. You must remember which is which. In my case, I cut the negative side, or the smaller legs, to make it even shorter so that I wouldn't get them confused. Since we don't have a lot of room, I just took the positive legs of the LEDs and bent them over to one side so that they could be used to contact the positive side of the battery. So now we have one side of our circuit built. Now we need to build the other side of our circuit. So I'm going to solder a wire to the negative legs of the LEDs. If you're a bit rusty on your soldering skills, it may be best to practice on some wire before working on your LEDs. They are robust, but prolonged heating with the iron can ruin them, so take care. Now I'll take the other end of the wire and solder it to one of the legs on my switch. All switches are different, so you'll need to figure out what legs do what on your switch. In some cases, you can find a single pole, single throw slider switch that has only two legs, but I was not able to find one at the mom and pop shop I bought these at, and thus I had to use an ohm meter to figure out what the legs do. If all this sounds foreign to you, then be sure to find single pole, single throw switches. There's no guesswork on these. Once I'm done soldering the LED wire, I then solder another wire to the other leg. So here's the circuit all built. The two LEDs have their similar legs twisted together. There's a wire running from the negative leg on both LEDs to the switch, and then there's a wire attached to the other pole of the switch that will go to the negative side of the battery. We can now test our circuit to see if everything works. Now 
Now comes the fun part, getting all this stuff to fit in a car that was not designed to take it. The first thing we'll do is tack in the LEDs. Playing around with them, I found that having them at the very edge of the headlight gave the best look. So with some hot glue, I'll glue them into place. I'm using hot glue as it's very strong, but not so strong that I can't remove it if I mess up. Plus hot glue is non-conductive, so I don't have to worry about it shorting things out. So you can see here that I'm slowly working my way down the car, gluing things into place. At this point, I want to glue in the black interior plastic piece to keep it from moving around. I plan to use this piece to help hold my batteries in place. After the interior was glued in, I can now place my batteries. It's important that you place the positive side against the positive legs of the LEDs. If you get this wrong, the lights will not come on. On the other side of the batteries, I stick in the wire that was attached to the switch. Off camera, I soldered the end of this wire to give it more rigidity so that I could push it in between the battery and the plastic interior. I then tested the circuit to be sure everything still worked. Since it did, I then glued the wires and batteries in place. Since the batteries are not soldered in and instead glued, I can change them out later once they wear down. While the glue sets, I decided to do some work on the front of the base. The base on the left is an untouched base, as a point of comparison. You can see I removed the plastic prongs and then shaved off some of the plastic to allow for the LEDs. Removing the plastic prongs will not affect the car in any way. Next we'll glue the switch into the hole in the back of the base we made with the Dremel. I chose this spot because it was the only place with any room and also it seemed like the perfect place to put the switch anyway. Any extra wire was glued to the body to hold it in place. Once this is done and you've tested the circuit again, we can put the two halves back together. Now it may take a little finagling to get everything back together. Push some wires here, cut some glue there. Just be patient and take your time. After you're done, you should be rewarded with nice bright headlights. So something to keep in mind is that every car is different how you place the circuitry will be different. However, the circuit can be the same from car to car. If you choose, you can also remove one of the LEDs without affecting anything, and your batteries will last longer. Now, I played with this car, filming it and taking pictures and whatnot for about 20 minutes, and haven't noticed any reduction in brightness. However, these super bright LEDs are energy hogs as far as LEDs go, and I would guess that you'd get more or less an hour of runtime. But then, that's just a guess. You won't really run the batteries completely down. You'll just drain them below the voltage that the LEDs will need to operate. For the LEDs I'm using, I tested just under two volts. However, as I said before, you can easily remove the batteries and put in a fresh pair if you like. As I mentioned before about the parts, you're kind of on your own there, but eBay is your friend. These are common parts and should be easy to locate. Well, if you enjoy this video, please thumbs up. If you have questions, you know where they go. Thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time.